Well, we have a little bit less than one week left until Halloween, so we decided that today on Tree Talk we were going to discuss the seasonally appropriate witch hazel, Hamamelis virginiana. Uh, witch hazel is an understory species of our eastern forest, uh, kind of a large shrub, small tree, somewhere in there. Uh, it's a multiple branching uh, shrub, um, where as you can see it has a very sort of distinctive form, very windy, uh, silvery, gray, brown kind of bark. Um, it always uh, it looks very light colored to me. You can kind of see this bark from a distance. Um, this time of year, sort of late October all the way through early January, is actually very easy to spot in the woods because it is going to be our only thing that's flowering. Um, it is our latest flowering woody species. Um, the flowers come about in late October uh, and, and run through December, sometimes into January. Um, so it's a pretty important species for our pollinators because oftentimes it's sort of their last meal before they go into dormancy. So our bees and our beetles and things like that. Um, there is a, uh, a group of moths called owlet moths um, that uh, actually are specialists um, from, for witch hazel. They will go out of their way to come out of dormancy to feed on witch hazel flowers during the winter, and they actually have uh, a special way of shivering to increase their body temperatures enough so that they can fly um, during those cold months just so that they can feed on witch hazel. They're the primary pollinator of witch hazel. Um, witch hazel, uh, so you can see these, these flowers are distinctive because they're the only t thing that's flowering right now, but they're also very uh, interesting in their own right, really funky looking, these, these delicate sort of gnarly ribbon-like petals, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, and uh, so once these are pollinated, um, the fruit is a kind of a, a woody capsule that surrounds two to four seeds. Um, in sort of mid to late winter, uh, that capsule cracks. I'm not sure if it's due to frost thaw process or if it's just time for it to crack, but it cracks open and expels the seeds um, up to 40 feet from the shrub. That's the primary way that it spreads, but you'll also see it um, and clonal patches. Typically, if you find one witch hazel, you're going to find more witch hazel. Um, uh, so once those seeds land, it takes them actually two years to germinate on the forest floor. Um, those seeds are not really a huge, important source of food for many animals, um, uh, but witch hazel actually is pretty important medicinally. It's the only plant-based medicine approved by the FDA uh, for a drug, which is pretty interesting. It's used as an astringent and an anti-inflammatory. Um, so I actually remember when I was a kid, I used to use it uh, on mosquito bites to reduce the itching, and it worked pretty well, so I recommend it. Um, it's obviously not very uh, useful as a timber species, but again, is important medicinally. Um, where witch hazel gets its name is actually not uh, uh, due to Halloween or anything like that, although um, there is a parasitic wasp that will lay its egg, uh, eggs in between the leaf tissue and create a gall that is very cone-shaped, kind of looks like a witch hat. <laughs> But actually where it gets its name is it's named after an elm species in Europe. Um, that elm species was used to douse for water, um, which was an old practice where people uh, thought that you could detect, detect certain things, whether that's water or minerals, gold, you know, whatever, um, by waving sticks with certain properties over the ground. Um, and uh, that species of elm in Europe was used to douse for water. Um, when European settlers arrived here, the Native Americans could find groundwater based on where witch hazel was. And that's because it grows in moist, uh, rich parts of our woods. Um, but Europeans probably thought, interpreted that um, ability to find groundwater using witch hazel as a dowsing property. So they would cut off stems and wave them over the ground, and they thought that the stems would bend down towards the ground uh, if there was groundwater there. Um, so actually witch hazel means lively, or, or the hazel part means lively because the stems are very bendy, just like the, uh, the elm species in Europe. Um, identification, of course, obviously easy to see that bark, these flowers. Um, the leaves are pretty distinctive too. This is kind of the best I could do this time of year, pretty beat up. Most of the leaves are off or falling off right now. They have very uh, rounded teeth. Um, almost lobe-like teeth all the way around. Um, they're typically quite stout leaves as well, and then the real giveaway is the offset leaf base, uh, where one, uh, one side of the leaf starts way higher up than the other one. So that's witch hazel, a really uh, interesting species um, of our forest, um, just a nice understory species, usually an indicator 
that we've had forested conditions for quite a while uh, because it doesn't really like to grow out in the sun too much. It's, it's a pretty shade-loving species. Uh, but uh, enjoy your witch hazel when you see it in the woods and have a happy Halloween.